I had to get rid of that somehow. If you all have ever been to- oh my god. If you all have ever been to public school before, there's a good chance that you've seen the Kelso's Choice Wheel in your classroom. It's featured very prominently even as I've grown up. It's a choice wheel where the cartoon frog named Kelso presents you with a wheel of nine choices to make should you ever have any sort of a dispute in or outside the classroom or on any school campus, whatever. I just suddenly remembered it recently. I kind of always thought of it as like the classroom Bible that no one used. I'm actually would be shocked if anyone have, has used it. I'm going to honestly ask this question to anyone who's watching. Have you ever used during your time in school, if your school ever featured the Kelso's Choice poster, have they ever used it in any setting to settle a dispute? I know I didn't, and certainly not many of my classmates did. And the reason why I bring this up is because I just was thinking about how goofy the execution process for this board would have been. The, the board itself, the, the principles that it projects, and the choices it gives you is pretty sound up until you have to use it. I mean, you're presenting this board to children who have very little to no pragmatic judgment. You know, they're very emotional. Trust me, I've been there. And most often, emotions will prevail in situations where this board needs to be used. So if you're trying to share a toy or something like that, like it says on one of the options, there's a good chance that you're just going to try to tug a war, yank it from one another, as opposed to trying to resolve or negotiate who's going to get the toy or who's how we're going to share this item between the two of us. Additionally, there doesn't seem to be any like sequencing, if you know what I'm talking about. No like way of escalating or choosing what choices you need to use after one fails, like kind of like a backup plan, a plan B. And I'm not talking about the contraceptive. That guidance is essential for letting kids know what to do in those types of stressful situations. They're kids after all, they need that sort of guidance. It's interesting that in some cases, whenever a kid messes up, it's usually attributed to the kid not knowing better. And that may be true, right? But the only way for them to know better is to guide them through, to kind of hold their hand through the process and guide them through the stepping stones. This board doesn't seem to do that. It, instead, it just throws nine choices at you and you're ex expected to use those choices to your advantage with the judgment of an adult. So I look at this board now and I'm thinking, okay, some of this makes sense. I know which you know decisions I want to make and I know how to apply them based on the situation that I'm in. But when you're in school, that line becomes blurred and situations can become complex and it just doesn't it doesn't work as well as it's needed to. So in this video, I'm going to be breaking up this wheel into parts based on the different kind of strategies that its choices offer. What the hell are you doing here, Tigger? Uh, more like, what the hell are you doing? I'm just making a video on the Kelso's Choice Choice Wheel. Oh, was that so, huh? You better watch what you say because he's my homeboy. You and him are friends? I didn't know that. Well... I'm not, I don't, I'm not hating on him or anything, I'm just- Keep my friend's name out your fucking mouth! You need to chill out for real. What the hell is that green thing that you're holding right Anyways, first off I have the avoidance strategies where you kind of just go away from the situation and kind of hope it solves itself or that your emotions will cool down with time. That includes walk away, wait and cool it off, or go to another game. This was kind of purposed in some capacity for kids on a schoolyard when they're playing games outside during recess or lunch, so that that's why that's there. Then there's the negotiation strategies where you actually try to bargain with the other person, uh, make a deal. I don't know what deal they're going to be making. Talk it out. You know, speaking of talk it out, there was this one time in first grade, there was this girl who I was uh, pretty close friends with. I think I had done something to like irritate her or piss her off. So I was actually trying to talk it out with her on like the school playground. But I guess this other kid who was in a different class, same grade as us, much bigger kid than me, who was like her freelance bodyguard, came uh, walking over to me, trying to look intimidating and everything. He just put his hand out. 
like in, the, like in a talk to the hand kind of motion and just press it against my chest as he was uh, walking forward. So he wasn't applying force. He already had his arm fully extended. He was just kind of pushing me back softly. I just whacked his hand away and told him to get off me. Uh, considering the kid's size, I'm just kind of glad he wasn't anything like a club bouncer because I'm pretty sure he could have picked me up with one hand and pinned me right into the ground if he felt loyal enough to this girl. Hope she's doing well. I haven't seen her since like... Well, like first or second grade. So she's been gone for a long time. Probably went to a grocery store to buy milk and never come back. I'm joking. She didn't actually abandon me in any capacity. I moved schools in like the second grade. So that probably played a big role. Why I never saw her again. Share and take turns or apologize. Again, this is sound up until you realize what audience this caters to. Kids are very emotional creatures. They're not gonna let a little bit of pragmatism get in the way of them getting everything they feel they're entitled to. Then there's the confrontational approach, or what I would consider to be the more confrontational approach, where you actually go up to the person and try to tell them or make them stop. God, what the hell is your problem, man? You need to learn to keep your hands to yourself. Stop, just like Kelso's choices. You remember that, right? Stop is what do you got to do? You got that? What the hell did I just... And if that doesn't work, do you remember when kids would usually try to assert their dominance and challenge the other person to make them stop or at least do something a bit more physical to try to force them to stop because they're not going to stop otherwise. And then, of course, lastly, you have the ignore it strategy. At the end of the day, I don't think this is that effective. I think this is actually one of the worst options, should there be any out there, because I don't know how much mental fortitude a kid really has to ignore a situation, especially when you're confined to any building or campus that the perpetrator of your issues is going to be attending alongside you. You might be sitting right next to them in a classroom and the teacher might be too stubborn to separate you guys because they think, okay, negative chemistry there, but at the end of the day, you might go to a workplace in the future when you're an adult that'll force you to be with a person that you don't like. And I just don't think that that analogy is entirely accurate. In school, you do not have an HR person. The closest thing you have to an HR is the counselor, and ain't no way a counselor is gonna bust into a classroom and try to tell a teacher how to do their job. That, that's just gonna make them defensive. You can go to the teacher, but the teacher could remain complacent on it and not do anything, saying that, hey, it's up to you guys to sort it out. Once again, completely disregarding the philosophy and the mindset that kids need to be guided to learn how to live through life. So it's really kind of a, de a weird delegation of responsibilities on the parts of some adults. They use this choice board as a substitution for their own intervention. They place all the responsibilities on kids who barely have their minds made up at this age and don't nearly have the mental fortitude to even carry out a lot of these solutions. They're about what? Not even 10 years out of the womb and they're forced to take on this mega responsibility that they have to solve their own problems somehow as if they were adults. I think one thing that's very telling about this board is the fact that at the very bottom of it, there's a disclaimer that reads, if you have a big problem, tell an adult you trust. But as we know, you know what happens in some school settings, a lot of adults may not be trustable in that regard. Some of them are, but you know, a good portion of them may be quite sus. And even then, that begs the question, okay, what would be a big problem? Would it be something like bullying? How are you going to get those other kids to stop? Who will the adult in this situation be? The counselor, the teacher? Like I said before, the teacher might be too stubborn to change, so that may be out the window. And on top of that, the counselors and elder adults can only do so much. They can only weather the storm as opposed to taking care of the whole problem. You could tell your parents, but they're away at work most likely, most of the time. So th they can only come in on very rare occasions to solve what the hell is happening to the child. I can only imagine how distressing that must be for a parent to know that their kid is going through something. And the fact that they're so detached from their kid's situation because they're away all the time. But considering the cruel circumstances like bullying and whatnot, and it's kind of like you're letting your kid out potentially into a flock of wolves and just have to hope that they don't get mauled into pieces. And like I said previously, a lot of these problems that take place, they are usually confined to one campus or maybe even in worst cases, 
in one building. So realistically, who's going to be able to solve the situation and have their intervention work? Only so many things can actually change the course of circumstance. You may be in a terrible situation, but how many of those solutions are actually going to work? And look, I understand that not every solution like Kelso's choices is going to be 100% foolproof. But at the same time, I do think that this choice wheel is should be a case study for that because at the end of the day, instead of offering guidance for a fostering young mind, they somehow expect all these kids to make decisions for themselves without letting us walk through the basic steps, without any guidance whatsoever. That'll ultimately lead to disaster. And instead of school being a pleasant place to go to every day, to learn, to make friends and socialize, it'll become sort of like a boulevard of broken friendships and broken dreams that not even Bob the Builder himself could fix. Bob the Builder, can we fix it? Hell no! There's no fixing that can be done with any amount of broken friendships and especially the trauma that one can sustain from uh, school. So those are my thoughts on the Kelso's Choice Choice Wheel poster thing that was prominently featured in a lot of public schools. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts on it. These are just my thoughts and kind of like my retrospective viewpoint on this as an adult that has now graduated school and I never really needed it in the first place but now I definitely don't really need it at this point to make my everyday choices. But uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to see anyone else's insight on this choice wheel because I'm pretty sure there may be differing and dissenting opinions that people have about this board. Maybe it actually worked for them. Maybe it actually helped lay the groundwork for how they make their decisions. But whatever the case, I mean, I, I still can't get over that. The ignore freaking thing. I, I mean, I how can you ignore something as a kid on such a fragile mental fortitude? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can only ignore something so much until the problem gets too much to bear. Well, you need to chill the fuck.